morning. Uh, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Wednesday, November 10th, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London. In Bermuda, it's 12.30 and in Mexico City, 10.30. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. About an hour or so ago, President Obama landed in Seoul, South Korea. His trip to Indonesia was cut short by 24 hours because of continuing volcanic eruptions by Mount Merapi, causing volcanic ash to uh, be emitted up into the air lanes. Apparently, Air Force One didn't want to take any chances that he'd be late for the uh, G20 conference in South Korea, so he's there already. On to our main news. Well, the main news today on this uh, front is Andrew Appel. This is no surprise to anyone. You could have seen it in the works. Andrew Appel, who was replaced at Aon as the CEO in April and then moved to the newly created post of Chief Operating Officer, has announced that he is resigning. He's going to leave at the end of the year to, quote, pursue additional challenges. Um, Appel uh, uh, was instrumental in merging the two companies, Aon with Benfield, and the reinsurance operations, and uh, he seems to have been on a track since then uh, to continued uh, remoteness, let's put it like that. And Mr. Appel said he's thankful for the opportunity to have worked with Greg Case, the Aon CEO, and to have been part of everything that's been accomplished over the last five years. So we wish Mr. Appel well. He certainly uh, has a good reputation in the industry. Well, drip, drip, drip. If you're a Rolls Royce, this has to be causing you to pull your hair out. Singapore Air has now announced uh, that they are grounding three of its A380s, the giant Airbus jumbo jet, uh, because they discovered oil stains in the engines that uh, should not have been there. Singapore Air indicated uh, the CEO said that they maintain the highest of confidence in the world's largest airplane. He said, quote, just because a car is recalled doesn't mean you can't use it in the meantime. We would not fly the planes unless we are confident that they are trustworthy. Uh, Singapore Airlines has 11 A380s. They've only grounded three, so uh, he's correct. The other eight are still flying. And, of course, the Singapore airliners uh, that were grounded are using the Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines. So Qantas, of course, has halted and grounded its three A380s, its six A380s, and Singapore Airlines is now grounding three of its A380s. Well, the A380's biggest competitor is the yet-to-be-launched uh, uh, Boeing 787 on its long-haul routes. Well, bad news for Boeing. Outside of Laredo, Texas yesterday afternoon, an electro electrical fire on the uh, number, two A, number two Boeing 787 that is conducting test flights around the U.S. was at the end of a six-hour test flight when dense smoke began to be uh, noticed in the back of the plane where some 40 technicians were sitting monitoring the flight. Uh, flames were subsequently seen coming out of uh, an electrical panel at the rear of the plane. Uh, the pilot declared an emergency and the plane landed on the runway at Laredo and the emergency slides were deployed. A Boeing test pilot said, uh, if this had happened at 25,000 feet, we possibly would have had real problems. He said a fire causes uh, much evidence and this will be looked at very carefully. It could be something that would require a system redesign, which, if that's the case, would end up delaying the uh, deliveries of the A387 even longer. Or it could be something as simple as a uh, electrical uh, panel uh, that might have overheated that simply needed to be replaced. Either way, not good news there. Well, definitely not good news 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. The 4,000-plus uh, people on the... Uh, Carnival Splendor cruise ship have been being resupplied by helicopters, dropping supplies to them from the USS Ronald Reagan, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. Uh, the huge cruise ship is under tow, making very slow headway coming into the port of San Diego after having had an electrical fire in the engine room, which has caused a knockout of air conditioning, sewerage, and basic uh, power functions of the plane, including the engine plant itself. 
Everybody seems to be bearing up. Uh, there have been no reported deaths or injuries on board the ship. So uh, the hope is, is that the ship will dock sometime tomorrow afternoon at San Diego. It's making a very slow headway under the tow. In reinsurance and insurance news, uh, Allianz has announced a drop in third quarter income, but indicated that it expects to remain on track uh, to record uh, its expected earnings for the uh, whole year. It apparently has received a boost from its asset management arm. Michael Dykeman said that the operating profits for 2010 would be toward the upper end of our target range. His target range was 6.7 billion euros, up to 7.7 .7 billion euros. He also said they're on track to exceed 100 billion euros in premium for the first time since 2005. Um, premium revenues fell slightly in Allianz's general P&C segments when adjusted for currency, although Dykeman said better underwriting results and more investment income lifted operating profits uh, overall by almost 9%. Uh, Dykeman told the Financial Times that he would consider acquisitions in the property and insurance segment, so they may be on the, on the hunt. Um, well, Hanover Re had some good news. Uh, they said this morning that gross written premiums in total businesses rose by an appreciable 11.5%. Uh, for the first nine months of the year to reach 8.6 billion euros. At constant exchange rates against the dollar, uh, growth would have come in at about 8%. Uh, their retention decreased to 91% uh, from 92.3%. That's not much at all. Uh, Hanover Re's operating profit stood at uh, 862 million euros. Pretty good for them. That includes a uh, previously reported on this program tax decision handed down by the German Federal Tax Court, uh, which made it possible to release provisions that had been set aside as a precautionary basis. That released about 100 million euros into the, uh, the net side. Well, the uh, broker uh, Towers Watson has made an interesting decision. They purchased a software company. They've agreed to buy the worldwide operations of uh, non-life insurance consultancy and software company EMB. EMB was founded in 1993 in the United Kingdom as an actuarial consultancy dedicated to non-life insurance and the development of high-performance actuarial software. It's now expanded into other areas, including marketing, science, and risk management. EMB has more than 300 employees, and in uh, the year ending April of this year, had revenues in excess of 40 million pounds. So uh, take whatever multiple you want on a technology company. These days it's about eight or nine uh, times revenue. That, uh, that was a big buy. We don't know what the total price is. We'll look for that. And finally, um, every risk manager's dream is seemingly possibly coming true in Germany, according to an article in Insurance Day written today by uh, the very respected journalist Herbert Fromm. German industrial groups are... Uh, as he puts it, keen to make a fresh attempt to buy insurance via the Internet. The system is going to be known as INEX24, I-N-E-X. It's going to be launched next summer. Uh, Thyssen Krupp, the German engineering giant, uh, the world's largest automotive company, Bosch, and coffee maker, Chibo, three big German industrial companies, have already announced that they're going to participate as seed purchasers. Um, Al, uh, Felix Hoffield, who used to be with Marsh Mack in Germany, is going to be the, uh, the head of the INEX supervisory board. Uh, German industry spends about 27, 28 billion U.S. annually on insurance cover. Dyson, Krupp, Bosch, and Chibo alone spend about 250 million euros. Those are big, big checks. Uh, what they want to do is increase transparency when closing deals and to simplify documentation. Uh, they're afraid placing insurance in traditional ways could easily lead to breaches of compliance rules. Almost all of the companies have their own captive brokers. Keep in mind that it is in Germany that the Aon plan GRIPS, G-R-I-P-S, uh, which is a plan to accumulate data from the buyers and from the prices of insurance and reinsurance, and then to remarket that data back to the buyers, has encountered its most resistance. Uh, many of the German insurers have indicated that they're not going to participate. Uh, so whether or not this is uh, related to that, I do not know. 
the article from Mr. Fromm notes that uh, some other efforts, such as Inrion, uh, did not work, which was a group coordinated by the reinsurance sellers, uh, and some other uh, ideas called InsureXL, which was put together by insurance brokers, did not work. This is a very different story, however. This is a group put together by a uh, group of people who write checks annually approaching $28 billion U.S. When they talk, people will listen. Uh, if I'm an insurance broker in Germany and if I'm reading this article, I am very afraid today. That's all the news we have for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Tom Bailey will be doing the broadcast from London tomorrow. Tomorrow is Remembrance Day in the U.K., and also here, the 11th day of the 11th month. World War I, of course, ended 11 minutes after the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. That's why we celebrate, or at least remember the day. Thank you for watching.